My name is Tom Otaboni. I'm with Heron Therapeutics, and today we're reviewing a bioequivalence study of HTX019 aprepotent IV and fosaprepotent in healthy subjects, a phase one open label randomized two way crossover evaluation. Consensus guidelines recommend treatment for CINV following highly emetogenic and frequently for moderately emetogenic chemotherapy comprises a three drug regimen a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, an NK1 receptor antagonist, and dexamethasone. Aprepotent, an NK1 receptor antagonist, is available only in its oral formulation, while fosaprepotent, its prodrug, was developed to provide an IV route of administration. However, IV fosaprepotent contains polysorbate 80 and is frequently associated with hypersensitivity reactions and infusion site reactions. Hypersensitivity reactions include flushing, erythema, and dyspnea, Infusion site reactions can include pain, erythema, swelling, induration, and thrombophlebitis. The rationale for developing HDX019 was to develop a polysorbate-free IV formulation of aprepotent that may provide a safer IV NK1 receptor antagonist option with lower risks of hypersensitivity and infusion site reactions. It also may improve patient adherence as compared to the oral regimen. Primary objectives of the study was to determine the bioequivalence of HDX019 with fosaprepotent IV in healthy subjects. The secondary objective was to evaluate the safety and tolerability of HDX019 and fosaprepotent IV in these same healthy subjects. The study was a phase one, open label, randomized, two way crossover, bioequivalence and safety evaluation of HDX019 and fosaprepotent, each agent administered as a single 30 minute IV dose to healthy subjects. Subjects were men or women age 18 to 55 with a BMI between 18 and 35 and not pregnant or breastfeeding. The study was conducted in two periods with a seven-day washout between doses and an observation period of 72 hours for each treatment period. Blood samples were taken and evaluated for pharmacokinetic and bioequivalence. Safety evaluations included treatment emergent adverse events and serious AEs. Presented here are the mean aprepotent plasma concentration time curves for HDX019 and fosaprepotent. As you can see, the plasma aprepotent concentrations were almost superimposable 45 minutes after the start of infusion. The 95% confidence intervals for AUC 0 to T, AUC 0 to infinity, and the plasma concentration at 12 hours were well within the bioequivalence bounds consistent with comparable aprepotent exposure. Presented here are the TAEs reported by greater than or equal to 3% of the patients receiving HDX019 or fosaprepotent. 41% of the subjects report at least one TAE, 21% in the HDX019 arm, and 28% in the fosaprepotent arm. The most common TAEs were headache and infusion site pain. A negative binomial analysis of the TAEs found the estimated event rate per subject was approximately half for HDX019 as compared to fosaprepin and IV, a statistically significant result. No severe TAEs, deaths, or serious AEs occurs, and all TAEs had resolved by the end of the study. A particular interest were TAEs occurring within one hour or 30 minutes of infusion start in patients receiving HDX019 or fosaprepin. Only one subject in the HTX-019 arm reported a TA within the one hour of infusion start, as compared to 20 in the fosaprepotent arm. Additionally, 17 of those 20s occurred within 30 minutes of infusion start for the fosaprepotent arm. The number of TAs within one hour of infusion start were one for HTX-019 and 32 for fosaprepotent IV. In conclusion, HDX-019 was generally well-tolerated and bioequivalent to commercially available fosaprepin. Fewer subjects receiving HDX-019 versus fosaprepin IV reported TAEs within one hour of infusion start, with the majority of the fosaprepin and TAEs occurring within the first 30 minutes. HDX-019 may provide a safer alternative to fosaprepin for patients with CINV without the risk of polysorbate 80 surfactant-associated systemic and infusion site AEs.